Hello, Raleigh. This is citizen reporter Robert Kortz coming to you from the Your Backyard Raleigh News Network. And I am delighted to have with me today Councilwoman Megan Patton from District B. Ms. Patton, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Well, the uh, election season has kicked off. We are less than 90 days before the election. And I wanted to take this opportunity, one, to introduce you to my audience uh, and show them somebody that I truly believe has a servant's heart um, and give you a chance just to talk about all that you've accomplished in the last two years. So uh, say hello and maybe give us a little bit about your backstory, if you would, Mrs. Patton. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everyone. I am Megan Patton. I represent District B here in Raleigh. So that's the far northeast corner of Raleigh. I catch the mini city and Triangle Town Center area all the way north to Wakefield and then down east in Headingham and everywhere in between. Um, so this is my first term in office. It's been such an honor and a privilege. Um, in, a pre in previous chapters of my life, I've been a public school teacher. I've worked nights in a factory, I've waited tables, um, and now I work in customer service for my day job. And outside of that, I've got a family, two dogs and a daughter and a husband. Um, so we're, we're raising our family here. We're all the way in on Raleigh and her, and her future. And um, yeah, glad to be here. Well, uh, Councilwoman Patton, I, I believe those are the roots, right, from which you came that makes you such a great advocate counselor. OK, but what this I mean is you're a grassroots. You're not doing this to advance your career. You're not looking at your service here as an ability to become own up the chain into a senator or, you know, you came to serve and you've done it with a servant's heart. So that is rare and greatly appreciated. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that is Truly, my motivation is to just be of service to the citizens, both the current citizens and future generations. I want to make sure we're being good right now and good ancestors. Well, that's if I don't mean to offend with this, but you have a very matronly approach to service. And I really like the way you take this very holistic everyone. And I don't want to call you Raleigh's mom necessarily, but I really like the way that that is your approach. Uh, am I too far off base here, Mrs. Patton? No, I think it's a I think it's a good approach. You know, I I really do try to listen to everyone. I think there's no such thing as a an invalid concern. I think we can always try to look for win wins and understand the the root causes of what's you know what's causing people's agitation on a certain issue. Um, and I also think, you know, part of being a mom is is opening the snack pack right now, but also making sure you're saving for your kids college. And right. and I try to bring both the, the care right now and the care for the future approach to my governance to you. Well, it's very uh, noticeable and appreciated. Um, also, Ms. Pat, what I love is you do not shy away from doing the research. You will dive in. If there's an issue and there's secondary or tertiary objects or things you have to research to get to the answer, you're not afraid to do that. Yeah, that's right. Big dork over here. Oh, I, I will always Your read power. I will always read the memo and then read the the footnotes in the memo and then I'll call um, you know, I, I regularly confer with our staff who are definitely professional experts in their particular thing. Mm -hmm. I'll canvas neighborhoods that are impacted by a particular decision. And then I have a pretty extensive network um, that I've built over the last couple of years of people who are doing this same work elsewhere. And I think that's important too, right? That people outside of the Raleigh bubble um, can be called upon to say, hey, what's the oh, what's first blush at this? And so I will always, I'll always get in the weeds on something. Well, we don't always have to reinvent the wheel. A lot of times the wheel's out there. We just need to modify it for our, our circumstances. Um, mm -hmm. Well, in this very vein of conversation, let me mention some of the wins that you've had in just two years of service. Uh, one of my favorite, Raleigh is known for its parks, and you've got a big park win for District B. That's right. Yeah, my very first rezoning case in my district, uh, I was able to work with the applicant to secure a, a big donation that will fund the master plan for the Forestville Road Park. Mm -hmm. um, and the master planning process for that one will kick off in the fall of this year. So it's really excited to see that 
piece of park property that would otherwise have been unprogrammed for, you know, maybe another 10 years, um, well, it'll start to come online and take shape. Well, that's fantastic. And uh, you just saw a need and re and made it happen, right? But it took an active approach in the community, which you can get from Raleigh's mom making that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it wasn't just me, but um, I had a lot of willing participants and um, some some pretty creative um, staff members who used a, like a legal tool we hadn't used before. And as a result, now Ra Raleigh will have a new park. Well, Megan, I really appreciate that you look after the fruits from the tree of Raleigh, but you're also hyper-focused on the roots, the, the, the employees, the systems, the very people and systems that make Raleigh work. Um, that You had a nice uh, update and a strategic with, uh, win with the fire plan. Would you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as Raleigh continues to grow, the way we um, sort of forecast out where our fire service needs are, like where what needs are occurring in which places, um, the way we're forecasting that needs to change. And so for the last couple of years, I've been um, diligently focused on making sure we launch like a fire master plan. And so this will look comprehensively across the city at what we've already got and what we need in the future and, and help us understand where they're where we need to add equipment. So if there's an engine there, do we need it to be a ladder truck to meet the changing needs of the city? Do we need to build new stations? And it will also um, call the question, how many employees do we need to add to meet those needs? And where do we need partnerships with other localities to make sure we're doing, you know, bring, bringing high quality service um, all to all corners of the city? I smile because like five ands. And we did this and it did that. So. Uh... Um, uh, and, but also just last week, I saw you in the community with the meet and confer with some of the firefighters. So that level of commitment, that in the community, activism and advocacy to citizen engagement is one of the many things that I think sets you apart from many counselors. So very grateful for that. Um, however, one last win that I've been thinking about for you, and there's plenty more, but this one is in the homeless community and the rent voucher situation. This is, this is a tough situation. I feel like Raleigh's stuck without county and state help sometimes, but that doesn't mean we can't move forward. So would you tell us a little bit about the, what happened on the rent voucher? Yeah, absolutely. So um, folks might not know this, but landlords are still allowed to discriminate based on source of income, which means that a renter who has earned income from a job can be treated differently from a renter who has alimony, social security, or a, a housing choice voucher. And because of that, it creates this additional barrier, even for people who have vouchers in hand, they cannot always find a place to use one. And um, so what we've done in the last budget cycle is um, launch this pilot program for direct vouchers, which will put mon the money directly in the hands of the citizens rather than kind of running it through this a uh, more intensive bureaucratic process that can sometimes um, thwart that thwart the actual f you know the the goal of the program. So this will put money in the hands of residents, and we hope that it'll bring um, about forty people in the pilot uh, mm -hmm. off the streets and, and into stable housing. Well, that's fantastic. I admire the homework it took to do this and the back room and the push and everything, Megan. You really have accomplished a lot in two years. And while I only mentioned three, is there anything else that you are proud of or perhaps you'd like to tell the YBY audience about? Oh, man, I'm so I'm so proud of so much of the work that we've done. We did um, restore CACs, which had lapsed in the previous term. Uh, we have uh, so, so many, why I'm, um, blanking on some of them. Um, we were talking about, you got in a, you got an extension for that community that was, yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. So Grovesner Gardens was an existing, uh, naturally occurring affordable housing complex and, um, was facing a, a rent hike and we found some funds to sort of lengthen the runway, um, and, and slow the um, increase of their rent for another year. So that'll give a smoother transition for those residents. Really proud of that one. And with your permission, I'm going to go back to the CACs real quick, if you sure. don't mind, because you said they expired. 
as a citizen, they were cut. Okay, right. they were they were removed and dismantled. And I really appreciate all the hard work that you did. And that is a major accomplishment. And I say that now to say, Megan, what can we, the YBY audience and citizens of Raleigh, do to help your campaign? Yeah, absolutely. So you can head over to my website, patentforraleigh.com. That's spelled out F O R, patentforraleigh.com. Um, also, Patent for Raleigh on all social medias. You can check me out and sign up for my newsletter. You can attend at the local CAC. And um, if you can find it in your heart to make a small contribution, sure would appreciate that too. I'll tell you, small contributions go a long way. Megan's getting it by, by small contributions from citizens. I know I peaked. And second, um, she has an upcoming open house uh, in August. So keep your eyes on social media. Join her in a local business as she is the queen of having her stuff at local businesses. So uh, right. Raleigh, Megan, let's we'll sign them out. Raleigh. Megan Patton, all this and more is in your backyard. We'll see you soon.